There he is. Aditya, how are you? Really good, thank you. Um, <laughs> Perfect. It's... So what was the um, the issue just now with the audio? I'm just uh, curious to know that. Oh, nothing. I uh, had switched on a Bluetooth uh, headset, and I didn't realize that the audio had gone to it. Ah. Because I was looking for the blue light. <laughs> mm. Because we don't, well, even no, though uh, Aaron is, is connected, but I don't see, uh, I don't hear anything from Aaron. So yeah, let's I think just Aaron's give him a smoke. If I'm not wrong. <gasps> Smoking. Think, oh geez, no, can't condone that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I, I, kick, I kick, <laughs> Yeah, I kicked the habit. Um, where was it? Like uh, a few years ago and um it really it really it took every bit of energy and every bit of um confidence i had and i of course i put on quite some weight when i quit smoking as well so yeah that's also yeah true. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um same same that uh, um so i i haven't smoked a cigarette since uh 2015 i think oh wow that's a long time that's yeah. seven years already I, I yeah, just like it's, I kind of been off it, I guess, over, mm -hmm. over time. But um, it's also I gotta say, like it's one of the most, uh, like from the quote unquote legal um, mm -hmm. substances available to you. I think uh, along with sugar, it's probably the worst thing you can do to yourself over time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially just, well if you um, if you then combine or if you just have a look at alcohol sugar uh nicotine and if you then look at some of the other um well um, uh, recreational drugs out there then well, we might have made the wrong decision back then but yeah <laughs> yeah probably i mean uh, just the, the health impact of smoking um is uh, is pretty insane but hey i don't know man we live in we live in Bombay, and um, I think Bombay and New Delhi, especially now, have kind of the worst air in the world. Oh, oh yeah, it's terrible. At least, but where I, I mean, I, I don't live in the city. I live a little outside, so it's a little better out here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's way worse in the city. Yeah, I live in the heart of the city, and it's uh, oh, wow. it's really bad. I've seen, I, mean, I grew up in Bombay, um, and um, I've just seen it go from... Like bad, uh, like it wasn't. It actually really wasn't bad when I was young. Uh, so when I was when I, when I when I was a kid and dinosaurs ruled the earth, <laughs> uh, we had like it was not too bad. But now it's just it's terrible. Yeah, that's one of the of things I've, I've heard, and it's still well, uh, Bombay and and well, the actual the whole of India is still on my to do list. And every time when I get an invite, I try to make the the actual travel. Uh, a reality but every time something pops up whether it's corona or, or covid or whatever you want to call it yeah. but what's the situation no, no, for you, you guys have, you currently what's the uh, the covid situation for you guys currently um, um it's it's a little it's a little better now uh, we mm -hmm. had a lot worse on the second wave yeah mm, uh, I wasn't there during the first wave. Uh, I was back in the states, but they said that it was like really brutal. Um, mm -hmm. But well, the, the first wave actually was uh, pretty. Yeah, when you were not around, I think it was. I, I think just the the repercussions for um, economically were mm -hmm. really bad. Um, so health wise, yes. Um, this is pre vaccination. I mean, yeah. so was the second wave technically. But um, but the second one was just like a whole a whole degree more devastating the first time around. The first time around, I think it was just like coupled with this entire. Uh, uh, it was pretty terrifying because you didn't know what was going to happen. You couldn't really get out of your house. You yeah. um, and you got to keep in mind, like Bombay is. One of the de like the most population dense cities in the world. I think Absolutely, two, yeah. if I'm not wrong, with Tokyo. Um, and um, <laughs> yeah, social just like how do you how do you just it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good question. I mean, uh, uh, what are you supposed to do? I was it was strange. I mean, I got um, I started working out three months into lockdown, 
because mm-hmm. um, I mean, basically we do manufacturing, not not for animal factory, but for my um, my other work, which mm-hmm. is um, I work with my dad in a plaster Paris manufacturing company. Oh, well, what and, kind um, of a manufacturing you said? Plaster of Paris. Okay. So that's uh, uh, dental plasters mostly. Mm-hmm. So we like for a lot of industries, well, they like that were catering to essential goods uh, were able to open up, and mm-hmm. um, we somehow managed to fall into that. I got to see the city like I've never seen it in my entire life. I mean, it was just like kind of so deserted for. I don't know, nine months or something. Yeah, definitely. you didn't see people on the road. Um, like everybody was paranoid. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and there was just like this very like like there's always this question mark about everything. You know, is this going to get back to normal? Is that going to get back to normal? Um, mm-hmm. uh, is it? And especially because it was like, uh, so Aaron wasn't around, but it was. It started off with this whole thing about it's going to be two weeks. <laughs> or yeah. 21 days. I can remember that. Yeah. And yeah, the prime <laughs> minister said it was 21 days, and we're like, okay, fine. So we'll just do this thing for 21 days, and then we should be okay. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but the second time around was pretty bad. Like that thing it just spread like wildfire. Uh, I've had COVID yeah. twice. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Like, uh, it's, I've had it once free and uh, once after both my vaccinations and I got to say the second time around was a lot worse. Okay. Oh, yeah. Are you, yeah, he just, like, he just had COVID and like Jan, like we didn't see him for wow. like two weeks in the office. Yeah, oh, it was wow. kind of weird. Yeah, first time around for me was um, just when it all broke out. So I was actually in Florida when Florida was having their spring break and I flew back um, to the Netherlands afterwards and I was sick for like four weeks and the thing was, the doctors didn't want to get me tested for COVID because I, I didn't visit Wuhan and I didn't visit, at that time, the, the major breakout in Europe was Northern Italy, which I didn't mm. visit either. But still, <laughs> but then again, the second oh. time, for me, the second time was uh, was uh, quite okay-ish. Uh, the, the, it was that I was tested positive, otherwise I wouldn't have known. Hmm. Mm. So I was lucky, maybe then, for the second time around. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's that, that's how it should be. You should have um, yeah less symptoms the second time around. But I think uh, the first time around, I had the OG virus. So <laughs> very first yeah. variant, and the second time around, I think like uh, because I didn't get like a proper test, I wouldn't have known anyway. We don't really have gene sequencing here during the tests. Um. I would. I feel like I had Delta and the Omicron wave. Yeah. And it was not fun. No, Delta was I mean, one of the, well, one of the, well, let's say, one of the worst strains out there, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I want, if I'd had that pre vaccination, I think it, would, it may have gone a lot worse. But who knows? Yeah. It's a funny thing. It, it affects everybody differently. And oh, yeah, increase. absolutely. If I so, see all the people that um, are still struggling a few months later, uh, what they now call long COVID, uh, that's mm, another thing altogether. Yeah. But um, let's start to talk about nicer things. So uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to, um, even though, and I'm, as, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm already recording this. Um, so I'll make sure to, to include this because this, this, this all paints a picture of the, the environment in which you guys operate. Um, but let's kick this off officially. So welcome everyone to the Modular Clubhouse, where we are joined by Aditya and Aaron from Animal Factory Amplification. So guys, first of all, thank you so much for uh, joining yeah. me at this ungodly hour for you two. <laughs> thank you for having. Thank you for having. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And maybe for. Um, for prosperity, what time is it for you guys right now? It is two forty a.m. Oh, sorry again, guys. I'm, <laughs> I do have to apologize, <laughs> but I think that no, um, that's okay. yeah, no, but still, I I do appreciate you guys taking the time on the one hand and also during this time. Uh, but yeah, first of all, uh, for those of 
the people listening either live or later on during the recording who is animal factory amplification how would you describe your company currently um i think you should take this one <laughs> uh animal factory i guess uh it's kind of a way of doing things i guess i think um mm -hmm. We're, we just like to really um, enjoy making things louder and uh, <laughs> and like it's kind of the the, the question is always you know why be quiet and why be subtle? Mm -hmm. um, we want to be anti that um, in pretty much everything that we do, I guess. Yeah. So. It, if you had to, uh, like, if you had to kind of boil down Animal Factory to to a guideline, it would be you know why be quiet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah just... I I actually um, I, I actually expected you guys would say distort the planet because that was one of the first things yeah, I, the... <laughs> I saw about uh, AFA. I'm like, okay, well that that immediately drew my attention to you guys. Actually, that that, that would be it. I mean, that's that's. Um... Uh, the, that's what that's we all that's what we also started using, but I didn't come up with that. That was something that Dr. Motto. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with Dr. Motto, I wasn't uh, to be uh, schooled as well. But Dr. Motto was one of the founders of the Love Parade in Berlin, and he stopped by the Animal Factory store at uh, at the first soup that we took part in, and it was just oh, nice. me at that point. And um, he started playing with the pedals because we didn't have any like actual modules at that point. We just had yeah, we did we did have some prototypes, but um, so he just played with the pedals. And mm -hmm. at some point, um, I have a video clip somewhere on Instagram. I think it's Dr. Motta, um slamming out some really really hard techno that. <laughs> um, was actually getting on the nerves of the other people around and it was um because <laughs> uh, ev everything was so loud with us yeah um that yeah at some point dr motto was just like yeah distort distort the planet and I'm like, yeah okay i want to use that <laughs> but no yeah that definitely um i think if, if 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 you've been on our website that's pretty much uh on the very first page at this point you know just uh to enter you the the, the 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 button just says distort the planet um and nothing else nice um, well, the, the yeah, question that's... is why dr mutter doesn't have an english wikipedia entry because i immediately pulled up the, the german wikipedia entry and the dutch one but no english one so that is one thing that we might need to uh, remedy asap <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's so he's become a cultural institution of sorts, and yeah. I mean you'll you'll probably find him. Um, uh, I've seen him at every love parade since I think. Oh, sorry, at every uh, super booth. Yeah, uh, he even spoke at the last one, um, doing like this this chat with Andreas Schneider. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah, I I think so. It's sometimes I think it's just like better if you don't try to define it yourself and you see it. Um, you see other people putting in new words for you, yeah. Because uh, and uh, he did that really well way before we had um, any of the modules actually. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, that that's a nice uh, that's a nice way to sum up Animal Factory. Even if it wasn't my own words, distort the planet. That's uh, I guess that's what we're on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes uh, you know, need we... that external. That's the external view to actually define yourself as well, where you have someone without any bias taking a look at you and say, well, this is how I would describe you. And that's, of course, very powerful to have. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think you, you, you need that for pretty much everything, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, otherwise you get trapped in your own, um, in your own biases and policies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and uh, um, that's not the best. I mean, um, I'm not a huge fan of being like uh, of relying on conviction. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I don't know, um, but that's that's just the way I see it. Uh, um, Aaron, what what do you think Animal Factory is, or what do what do I think an A A F A or what? Uh, yeah. So I have a pretty like a different like a, not approach, but how I was how I was introduced to A F A and other the this I think so. This was like back in 2014, mm-hmm. and I used to work as a, a recording engineer and we have this expo it's 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 it's, it's called palm expo it's the nam for bombay yeah um, and i was yeah <laughs> yeah and i was at the demo booth for slate uh, like i was demoing the slate raven uh, to people and like no one was really in, no one was really interested uh, but then Aditya shows up and he's like a friend of a friend and and what we chat for a bit and then my friend's like oh yeah he makes uh he makes amps and i was like oh cool like what amps and he's like oh he makes tube amps i'm like who's who's making tube amps in bombay he's like oh yeah aditya's making tube amps in bombay <laughs> like, okay cool and then we became friends later we became friends more because uh we had the shared love for seinfeld Oh. And Kobe enthusiasm, <laughs> and I think so. That's 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 what still like drives um, our relationship. It's like a it's been a constant. Uh, but then later, uh, uh, someone's like, "Hey man, like, uh, like Aditya is making like these cool pedals, and you should like recheck really it out." And I think so. The Chemical Burn and God Eater were the first things that I had like take. I had like taken a look at, and I was like, "Geez, these." sound like mental like yeah they just don't sound like anything you've ever heard um they've got this very weird naming pattern where you where you're like what the fuck does the hestia knob do like <laughs> and, and like i i have no idea let's turn let's turn it and find out so i think so afa to me means uh one be rowdy and two is um uh, I think so, like, okay. yeah. yeah, and and to some extent, uh, uh, Sonic exploration because yeah. when you turn a knob, you don't know what you're gonna get, but you know what you're gonna get is gonna be good. So it's nice. it's a lot of stank. It's it's a lot of stank faces in the testing room of the office where <laughs> when we're like uh, <laughs> developing a new module and we like turn and we're like, oh yeah, that sounds. That sounds sick, man. Shit, yeah. <laughs> I'm perfect. Exactly, like how a friend of mine, so the uh, the guy who actually did the logo for us, yeah, and is now um, he's actually uh, like kind of running the UX department of uh, of one of India's biggest companies. Great. Um, he he kind of described my my my, my job in my life as that. <laughs> so, like it's a bunch, of, it's you and a bunch of guys that look like you. <laughs> uh, all standing around these these things, whatever they they are, with knobs and lights and cables and stuff, and they're like, oh, done this knob, done this knob, bro, done it, yeah, oh, oh, change the sound, oh, sick, oh, yeah, sick, 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 bro, sick, yeah, okay, turn that, push that button, sick, bro, sick, sick, and that's I said, oh my god, it's actually what that's exactly what it is. <laughs> and now I have this, I have this Seinfeldian. Um, uh, uh, image in my head where you've got identical copies of the both of you, and I've seen pictures of both of you it's just standing around, just something that has some knobs on it, whether it's a module or a, or a pedal, and where you're just like echoing each other. Like, I think it was one of the Rick and Morty episodes where you had what's the dad's name again? Jerry, uh, where well, you have multiple Jerry. Jerry's that they, they're all congratulating each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the yeah, image I've got. That, no, yeah, that's 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 like most that's like most of the days in, in the office. O- also, we can like we do have like a very serious work. We do have very serious work uh, place and like work yeah. a- ethic. Like we got like each day we come and we got like a lot of shit to do on a docket. But then we can never have a serious con, like a serious con, like a serious conversation. We start off to like talk about some. We we like talk about like oh we need to like produce this. Our face, our face need to go for marketing, and then someone mm-hmm. has to drop in some obscure ref, ref <laughs> and then we're off. 
for like 10 minutes and be like and then someone has to pull us back and be like guys you're talking about the face uh, about the face back please track types. Yeah. yeah yeah and it's not me getting things back on track um <laughs> It's really, I mean, I can't describe it. It's very, I mean, I think Aaron's also very Larry David. Um, like, he's just, I, I, I don't understand how, because you're like, you're, you're in your mid 20s and you have no reason to be. I mean, I'm 40, I... I'm aging. I like, my back is bad. I have bad knees <laughs> and stuff. It's just like, uh, and, and, and he's already so disgruntled. <laughs> so most of our conversations are, I mean, I don't even. I, I can't. Even, I can't even bring up one if I wanted to. It's one of those. It's always one of those spur of the moment things. It's yeah. Just like, like, like an I, observation, and I'm just like, no, that's not. Like, <laughs> like the knobs last week. We had to like look for new knobs uh, because uh, they weren't fitting on a module, and the and the UX was like really bad. So we're like, oh wait, we need to like look for a new knob that's like a little bit thinner. So that mm-hmm. there's more playability when you like go to patch, um, like a, a different knob is not going to come the way. And he pulls up a knob. And I'm like, dude, that knob looks dumb. I'm not going to put <laughs> that knob on an AFM module. Look at it. It looks dumb. Like that. We are, no, we're not going to buy that knob at all. And, and he's like, what do you mean by the knob is dumb? I'm like, just look at the knob. The knob looks bad. So... Yeah, but yeah. those kind of things you need to talk about those kind of things uh, but let's yeah. let's step step back a few f- a few years before that before you joined Aaron um mm-hmm. did you how did you ever start with 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 AFA what hit you when you were growing up where you said I want to make pedals and modules something happened along that way that caused that um, nothing that direct, uh, but I think it was struck by like, lightning or with. yeah. No, I think it was just like uh, kind of obsessed with, um, with with the sounds on like on on the albums that I listened to, I guess. So like, mm-hmm. and I think it was all this, it was all this distortion. That so what kind of albums were you listening to? What kind of music was that? Oh shit, everything. I think um, so when I was. Uh, when I was younger, I'd say about nine or something, um, some of the kids that I was in school with, that I and I used to hang out with, we discovered he- we discovered heavy metal pretty early. Oh yeah. And um, back then, you didn't really get much, right? So you have to you have to keep in mind this is pre, this is a uh, '90s India. Um, yeah. And at that point, uh, it was just you. It was very hard to come by. Western culture, so we consumed it yeah. in incredible countries every chance we got. And then in '91, when 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 MTV, when well, when India opened up to the world, essentially, because before that we were closed market. Yeah. Um, in '91, when India opened up to the world, we started. I mean, we couldn't just, we we couldn't get enough of um, the things that were coming in and. Because this is pre-internet, everything that mm-hmm. we got was dated a couple of years. So it was around that time that we discovered stuff like Iron Maiden and uh, Black Sabbath and uh, Megadeth, uh, the older Metallica albums, mm-hmm. um, like the eighties trash like. metal um, <laughs> oh, yeah. revival. It's yeah, huge. Absolutely. I was really into trash metal. I I still I I think I still like. I don't listen to it that much, but I still enjoy it, like, very, very much. Um, and it was, um, it, it was just these sounds. Uh, I have this really weird memory of um, my dad mm-hmm. uh, playing a reel-to-reel, like one of those old yeah. uh, Akai yeah. reel-to-reels. And I was really entranced by this one sound that was, uh, that turned out to be, Hank Marvin playing um, guitar on Apache, and it was like this 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 echoing guitar sound. So I think I was always kind of fascinated by um, by the treatment and the processing of sound to make things sound not like what they are, I guess. Mm-hmm. So and with time that just grew, and I think the big ones for me were really um, 
um, synthesizers because uh, you had all these really um, otherworldly sounds, I guess. Yeah. So the, the, this is not something that's very common to. Um, I mean, it's very common in Indian music, uh, or in in um, in sorry in Bollywood music specifically. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know if you know this, but Bollywood music has a huge culture, uh, like this huge. Um, we had this huge disco culture at one point. Oh yeah, I've um, I've I've seen yeah. some documentaries and I've enjoyed several of those um, movies covering that era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, like the, the the king of Bollywood disco actually just died recently. Like his name was Bappi Larry. Uh, he was a huge, like massive Bollywood producer, and he was uh, he was kind of on the on the yeah the forefront of the disco movement in some sense. So you had synthesizers there, but again, this was not stuff that was easily easily available. Yeah. So at some point uh, when I started playing guitar, I was always like after you know sounds, and I just like because we, at that point we just talked to people. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just got on the internet, so we had 28.8 kbps modems. <laughs> and uh, that's more said, than I had. I had a 14k4. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? Well, this is in what was that? In 1998, I was still working with a 14k4. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, uh, I did have an unfair advantage. To, um, this is ninety seven twenty eight point eight. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, to be honest, my my dad had a fifty six point six one at that time. So yeah. So. Oh yes. The I I had to do with his internet. discards. So yeah. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> the high speed internet that I wasn't allowed to use because it was so expensive to use. Oh yeah. For that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I'm guessing that puts us around the same age as well um probably yeah so then you do remember it was the like most people around then uh you have to keep in mind we're in the 11th grade at this point would be downloading other things (laughs) but um yep i was kind of i'd gotten onto this thing where somebody had said you know if you want to get that kind of sound without spending two to three thousand rupees um which back then was a lot of money yeah um on a guitar pedal you can just go to the market and buy the parts required to build your own guitar pedal i'm like oh, oh really nice. you can do that and i awesome. uh, said so, yeah look for something called a schematic um just search on uh what was it back then alta vista and yahoo i think Search oh, it's a for... vista, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. They said search for distortion schematic and painfully <laughs> slow, and we just like wait for things to load. And uh, um, I, I, you know, for 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 everybody else, it was like just watching like a photo of Pamela Anderson from one of her Playboy clothes come. Uh, yeah, that that was around the same time screen. when that happened. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but for me, I was just like I was downloading fuzz face schematics, <laughs> and I'd print them out straight right away because I said, you know, what if I lose it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to take different times. Absolutely again. different times. Beautiful. Yeah. So, but I think the big one for me was really Nine Inch Nails' Broken album because that just turned the concept of everything I knew about music till then like uh, earlier like until then it had been intro was chorus was chorus guitar solo yeah um uh, etc and uh, broken was just it kind of blew my mind it was uh, it was just the heaviest most abrasive record i'd heard till that point and um and I had no idea who this band was or anything. I just yeah. heard the name and borrowed the CD from a CD lending library. And um, yeah, I just ripped my face off, basically. <laughs> so, but you, you uh, don't want to like, know oh, how many people like in the modular society I've interviewed that have said it was Nine Inch Nails, it was metal, it was... 
um, Iron Maiden, it was uh, Fear Factory, those kind of bands that truly oh, turned yeah. them Fear into, Factory, yeah, yeah t- turned them into synthesizer enthusiasts, which is of course quite. I might just want to well rebrand my show and talk it uh, and rebrand it into the metal archives or something because it always goes <laughs> back to metal and I, I love that because I, I I'm a big metal hat I'm still a big metal hat and I truly love that and especially then you then mention uh, Broken by uh, by Nine Inch Nails that's of course one of the most um, you might say one of the most iconic records of that time which was um, probably like mid mid 90s I would say it was 92 I think could be um, yeah. uh, 90, uh, 91 or 92 because 94 yeah. was when uh, Resonant released Download Spiral yeah and um, I think 93 was um, no, 93 was also, uh, the timeline's a bit fuzzy but he also did Smells Like Children with Marilyn Manson then yeah and um, and then Antichrist Superstar and um Broken, uh, sorry, uh, the Download Spiral released around the same year, if I'm not wrong. But like again, this was India, so I got everything two or three years, two, three or four years, in fact, mm-hmm. later. So oh, wow. I was just like discovering stuff, and that kind of took me on a bit of an. I said I want to know more about this music, and uh, I found a really old, like actually a friend of mine found it and I borrowed it from him this magazine about industrial music, mm-hmm. and it introduced me a whole bunch of other bands like Coil and Prong, Einstürz in the Neubauten, um, Cobb and Gristle, Psychic TV, yeah. uh, Knights of Red, um, all of that. Wow. So it was, uh, I just thought like, I was just finding all these bands that nobody else I knew had ever heard of and still a lot of, most of my friends have, like, they, they don't really listen to any of this stuff. So... Um, so yeah, that was uh, kind of that was the space where it, where I actually wanted to build things. And again, uh, it also came from the point of view of you know it's just too expensive to get this to, to just buy the stuff, go to the store and say, hey, I want to buy a guitar pedal. Because yeah. all you got was Boss. That was the only thing that you got. I think Boss, Digitech, and G- Digitech and DoD. And yeah, it was, which were uh, probably unaffordable uh, in India back then. They were unaffordable. They only had like these two or three models, so you yeah. didn't have the entire product range. It was the DS1 and the MT2, the Metal Zone. I don't know if you. <laughs> yeah, the Metal uh, Zone. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> the Metal if you Zone still, defined. If you still have one of those, they, those are worth their weight in gold. Oh yeah, absolutely. They still make them. I mean, they're just uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, I I think Boss is an incredible under, like just like the most underrated metal company out there because they built their shit like they're built like tanks. Yeah. Um, they don't die, and they're incredibly consistent. So if they do happen to die, uh, you just go to your store and get another one. It'll be exactly the same. Yeah. Well, what was the it's... predecessor for the MT2? There was another paddle, um, that's no the, longer the HM2, being... I think. Uh... Heavy metal too. Yeah, that could be. Because if you or because as you said, the MT two is still being being manufactured, but the MT two MT one There was a really weird one called the Metalizer because it was a distortion and a chorus in one. And uh it was a really strange pedal. Um it was called the digital metalizer, if I'm not wrong. So it had this analog metal distortion circuit and then this digital chorus type thing uh, yeah. in there, so I'm not sure if that's the same one. There was the yeah. HM2, which was really, really famous. It yeah. says the um, MZ2. Yeah, the it's MZ2. it's straight. Yeah, it's the dis, the distortion and two chorus and three delays. Wow, this yeah. sounds wrong, but I'm sure it sounds <laughs> great. So I'm what sure was your weird as fuck. Do you share this um, this metal uh, background, Me- Aaron? Me? No, not at all. I grew up playing piano. I mean, I am a pianist. I grew mm-hmm. up playing piano since I was three. Uh, kind of like gave gave up, gave it up in the middle for a while. Um, and when I used to um, like work in the city uh, as a music producer, 
more like a, a, a producer's assistant. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used to do a lot of punk bands in the scene. Nice. So, and all the old uh, alternative bands. Um, and that's like that's how we met. And we had a lot of like mutual friends. Uh, so, yeah, I was like really big into punk, really big into indie music. Um, and then I went to college and I saw Omar Dajulison for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, I asked my professor, I was like, hey, uh, what is this? He's like, oh, yeah, we like get to that. And <laughs> uh, completely like fell in love with it. So, and then, yeah, here I am. But I was, I went to study jazz. It turned into something else. And I came up with a degree in like uh, production design. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But I two mean, diff- I still, to- I st- two totally different routes to where you yeah. are currently. Yeah, I mean, I do, I, I do still like play jazz, or I used to at least back when gigs used to happen. Back when gigs yeah. used to happen. Back when gigs used to happen in Boston. Uh, but then, uh. I, I used to work for an architectural firm in Boston um, as mm-hmm. the technical director. And that is where I realized that I really love to build things. And I really love to build things on a massive scale and love to work with my hands. And I used to also be the service technician for the school. Um, yeah. So I used to fix about like 30 amps a day. Uh, fix all the old um, synthesizers in the school, and we used to also fix um, a lot of uh, syn- and, uh, a lot of synths and guitars for the for the people in the Boston area, uh, in the Boston area. So that's how I like got into electronics. And my, I mean, my dad was an electrician, like he still is. Sorry, yeah, my dad is an electrician. <laughs> uh, so he taught me how to solder. He taught me how to solder at like a really young age. So I was pretty good with an eye and, and the and they were looking for someone who could like be there for the set for this a seven a m shift so that yeah. was cool and funnily enough uh because we were a yamaha uh or a yamaha or authorized service center like one day we get a call in the, the shop and they're like hey um we checked that you're a yamaha like so that a so that fight tech uh, in the city, uh, have you ever worked on a CSA? Have 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 you worked on a CSA? I was like, no, but I know what it is, and uh, <laughs> uh, I can get in touch with the company and get a service manual. They're like, okay, cool. Uh, we're getting a CSA. We're we're getting a CSA. and it needs um, a key bed re a a, a key bed refurbish. I was like, okay, wow. cool. Uh, I'll clear some space in the shop. Uh, and a pickup truck shows up uh, with like three with like three people, and they load it into the shop. I'm like, yeah, this is huge. So I'm checking the guy out. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So I'm like, whose is this? Because he's pretty rare. He's like, oh yeah. Do you know Vangelis? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. He's setting up a new studio. Uh, he's setting up a new studio in New Hampshire. So yeah, we're just gonna like bring all our synths here to get them fixed. I was like, yeah, okay, cool, Vangelis. <laughs> Thank CSA. you very much. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so and I'm, and I'm just pulling up the Wikipedia entry on the CS80, and the second uh, uh, paragraph is just called Vangelis. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's it's I, Yamaha CS80, then software and hardware emulations, and then it's Vangelis. Yeah. I think so. So that's you. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I I think so. He had like two, so maybe I had gotten like the new one, uh, like the new new ish one. But uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty wild to work on that. I was extremely scared that I shouldn't fuck it up. Absolutely, uh, of course, yeah. Yeah, but it was pretty pretty interesting. So yeah, that's how I got into the modular world. So I. I didn't come from a background of like making them, mm-hmm. uh, but I came from a background of like fixing them because we used to also get a lot of Yorak uh, modules in the shop. Like, hey, I plugged it in the wrong way. Oh, I was like, no, oh yeah, yeah. I, I need to I need to change the resistors um, and like those diodes, and then it just come back to life. So uh, I could read a schematic, uh, but I could never like build a thing. Mm-hmm. 
So it was very interesting when I joined, uh, when I started to work for Aditya, that when I like, yeah. actually started building. And that so so you brought a bit of the the Eurorack knowledge that you well encountered when you were um, repairing these these Eurorack modules. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Aditya, did you did you actually have any sort of exposure to Eurorack or modular synthesizers before then? Uh, no, absolutely none. I mean, I think um, um, I'm I'm not a musician, so I don't really make music and um, I didn't I, th I think one of the things that Animal Factory ended up costing me was uh, the uh, the luxury to play my um, to play any of my instruments at uh, um, at regular intervals so I did start kind of building the well I, I, I got myself a couple of cog walkers and that was my <laughs> uh, that was the only thing I had at that point uh, yeah. when um, when I was approached by my now distributor to take the pedals. I, in fact, I didn't even I only made the modular stuff because I was asked to, and um, I think at the time of doing the first super boot that we did, mm -hmm. I had actually come up with this with this. Um, this jumper cable modular, which had uh, which had a couple of oscillators and an MS20 filter and stuff, so yeah. that I could demonstrate things at uh, Super Booth, and nice. uh, that was called the Songbird, and got a lot of like on uh, it got a lot of uh, a lot of um, people looking at it, but I also got feedback saying you know this is cool, but this is a project and really not a product, so. <laughs> We've taken, we've gone back on that, and uh, we're hoping to release it very, very soon this year. Um, nice. Under the name Ahimsa. So there's that, but I didn't have anything. Um, I'd never even seen a modular until 2000 and what was it? Uh, 2018, I think. 2017, yeah. something, something like that. Um, and that was at Schneider's Laden. So I went yeah. to Schneider's Laden for, the, in, I think in, uh, that was 2016, if I'm not mm -hmm. wrong. Um, it was the first time that I tried to go there. It was 2013, and I showed up just after closing time, and they said, no, we're done for the day. <laughs> and then I said, okay. Well, and, and Andreas uh, sent you away again? or I, I don't know who it was. I'm just assuming it was him. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Was, uh, it was on the intercom, and... Uh, it was uh, obviously like impossible to find Schneider's Laden. Uh, I've I've never uh, been cause... there, so I can't I can't uh, comment on this. I I do hope it's... to make it to uh, to uh, uh, to Super Booth this year, but I'm not quite sure yet. I still need to make my arrangements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you if you're going to Super Booth, then uh, you probably end up at Schneider's Laden sometime. Around absolutely the, well maybe not not on the days themselves because i think they're closed on those days mm -hmm. um but uh, before or after so yeah um i think 2016 was the first time that i actually saw a, a modular in the in the proverbial flesh um because until then i had messed around with um like modular synthesis concepts so it, it's weird because um you know i've never actually used any uh, vintage gear or pedals or synths or anything like mm -hmm. I've never seen them, never used them. Um, I think I was just like I've, I've heard or re I've seen and heard a real nine oh nine once. Um, we we don't have access to that sort of thing here. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd on so like the extent of my knowledge was things like uh, propeller head reason. I some yeah I, I was a huge fan, and I discovered that at some point that if you hit dab, you get all these uh, things at the back where you can batch CV in and out of things, and uh, that's what that's what got me into like modular approaches, if not modular synthesis. Cause yeah. that's when I realized that you could like take the oscillator from one and route it into the CV input of the other one. 
and then you'll have like these weird FME things going on. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just kind of like exploring, I guess. Yeah, I, I didn't but even, so it I had to do fun. with the well, the limitations that you had in India, where you don't have well as easy access to synthesizers as we might have had in the West uh, during that time. But then these digital well uh, reproductions were a good segue into it. Oh, absolutely. I think, um, and that's why I also tell people, like, everybody asks me, like, how do I get into your rack? And I'm just like, um, mm. well, don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you, just don't do it. Like, it's it's going to cost you your money and your friends. Um, and your family, but, probably, you know, even, yeah. And your family, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, if, if you're really into it, then maybe just try something like a VCB rack or something. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like I was completely cut off, but so I, um, here's the thing, I actually studied in Germany. Mm-hmm. So I had my, um, my engineering degree was done in Germany, but I was completely out of the music scene at that point. I guess I was always tinkering on the side. Yeah. But uh, for me, there was like this one huge guitar phase, I guess. So that was when I was like really obsessively building amplifiers and what. Yeah. So Not where bad, where in Germany did you music. study, if I may ask? Um, I studied in this little uh, semi-provincial town called Gießen, which is wow. about 70 kilometers north of Frankfurt. Um, it's mostly a university and not, not much more. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's not, it's, uh, it's not, not very exciting. If you haven't heard of it, then, I, um, to be honest, um, even, even if you know, you haven't heard of it and Frankfurt is like four hours. Well, it's a four hour drive for me to get to Frankfurt. I would say. Yeah. Right, so Gießen is uh, like 45 minutes north, and like I said, uh, if you haven't been there, I congratulate you. Uh, <laughs> it's not very, it's not very exciting, um, although it has pepped itself up drastically over the last 10 years or so. Um, so, I, so I did my degree studies there, and um, I wasn't in music in any sense at that time. That only really started when I moved back to India after, mm-hmm. finish, after graduating. Yeah, and uh, I just needed something to do because I had like this extra time, and I need like a break from work, I guess. And then so you started, started to make these uh, these these pedals that you were That's still right, yeah. working on. And what was the first pedal yeah. you made then? Um, the chemical first board, functioning right? pedal. Um, oh, as a product, yeah, that was the chemical bond. I okay. want. I wanted a really abrasive, um, like kind of in your face wall of fuzz, and nothing else was doing it for me. Um, and then I came across the Shinai Super Fuzz FY6 circuit, mm-hmm. and that was, um, it sounded like really, really big. Um, and weirdly enough, I don't know why, but I decided to put some, I decided to make some changes to it uh, immediately without like trying it or prototyping it mm-hmm. um, to make it a little more modern sounding, so a bit more stiff in the output, not that uh, vintage slag, I guess. Um, just a little more power, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, that was around, uh, actually when I, when I built that first prototype, I said, you know, this is something that's actually pretty um i don't know i had a good feeling i guess i said this is something that i would try to build <laughs> and this is this is a very naive me talking i guess but i said yeah oh maybe i'll build like 10 or 25 of these in a year <laughs> and then i'll build an entire business around that so we only build like two pedals a month or something and that should be enough to survive <laughs> um oh. And obviously it didn't go that way, uh, I, and I have a lot of other people to thank for that. Um, but yeah, it was the super fuzz um, variant, the chemical burn that uh, that I don't know just took off like awesome. crazy. But the thing is, you do recommend a hazmat level A protection gear. Uh, to using the, that panel. Unfortunately, the link on the website doesn't work anymore, 
but still um so yeah, what kind of what kind of volatile uh materials are you using in that uh, pedal then <laughs> <laughs> just good old-fashioned new um yeah car in production silicone that's that's about it <laughs> <laughs> F- F- about face melting fuzz you might say yeah <laughs> yeah I do, I do remember though, because while building this, you do need to wear like a mask and stuff. Because I think so. This was like one of my first weeks in the office, and I'm like testing in the back room, and and I, I can smell this acid. I'm like, what oh, the no. fuck is he doing? I'm like, what the fuck is he doing in the back? And he was etching a face plate for the chemical burn. So all of them are oh, like no. hand etched with uh. I don't know what 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 this is. It's like some cause some caustic like chem and some some like caustic chemical. <laughs> so he comes out. Acid. Yeah. It's so he like yeah. comes out with like gloves. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm etching a plate. I'm like, oh cool. Okay. No. Oh well. So yeah. When yeah, so did that actually moment, moment come to be when you said, okay, next to pedals, we're also going to make Eurorack modules. That there, there, there was a there was a turnaround for that. It's kind of funny. There was this guy, uh, this guy in Bombay. His name was Aqua Dominatrix, and uh, he asked me Excuse to. Excuse me. What was his name? Aqua, Aqua Dominatrix. Dominatrix. Aqua Dominatrix. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna write that. His, down. his, his real name is Akshay Rajprohit, but I think you'll find <laughs> Aqua Dominatrix faster. Um, uh, so he had asked me to build a chemical burn modified with CB input and. I tried, it didn't work out, or it didn't sound very good, so I kind of left, abandoned it right there. Mm-hmm. And it was um, in 2016, um, now this is another like really weird story that um, I'm just very fortunate happened. I, I don't know if it's like one of those things that just aligned. Um, I have no idea how he got in touch with me or why, but this one morning I just woke up to an email Mm-hmm. from uh, Douglas McCarthy of Knights of Reb. And um, he said, hey, listen, we're doing this thing in Los Angeles and we really think we would really like to do it in India as well. Um, like this modular worldwide show. And that really got me very excited because I said, that's super cool, but uh, I don't do modular. I just build like pedals and stuff. And... He said, well, you're the only person that's building things in India. Um, <laughs> oh, perfect. And, uh, and I said, okay, um, let's get talking. So then we started talking there, and uh, uh, we're actually pretty good friends now at this point. Um, uh, he was at my wedding and stuff. So, um, oh, wow. um, but yeah, so Doug, that's all, I, the thing is that that project never happened. Because uh, just doing stuff in Bombay is prohibitively expensive in terms of uh, events um, and finding a venue. And I think the scale that we want to do it as was just a lot bigger mm-hmm. than um, than the actual target audience could support. So I was just like, I don't know how we're going to get this thing sponsored, and I'm not I'm not the guy. But he said. You know, I'm going to be spending a few months in Berlin, so why don't you just come by? Um, I can introduce you a couple of people here, and he kind of introduced me to Schneider's Laden, and uh, wow. it just so happened that Schneider's uh, distribution company Alex was Ford. looking to yeah. Alex Foria were looking to start their pedal line as well. Yeah. So what was the guy's so name again? So it was again? just like uh, Doug McCarthy. Oh, McCarthy. Was. Okay. Yeah. From Knights of Ebb. Um, so he introduced me to Schneider that day, and Schneider in turn introduced me to like these two guys who were standing there. I said, uh, you know, uh, they were on Alex Forum. That's my distribution. That's my distribution company. Yeah, and yeah. sit down with them. Awesome. And it just so happened that they've been saying, you know, it's just like bizarre because we want to start like looking for boutique metal manufacturers. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm here. <laughs> And uh, uh, we took. I uh, obviously had carried my stuff with me. Yeah, and of course. Yeah. They said, "Okay, let's go into the uh, at this point." Um, 
uh, into their office back then, which is close to the store. Mm-hmm. Um, we ran everything through uh, a bunch of things through the pedals, and they were really excited about them. And I said, you know, he said, of course, we're really happy to get to start with the pedals, but um, how do you feel about doing these in your act format? I'm like, yeah, sure, okay, can't be that difficult. I'll I'll try it out. Um, and then that actually got me thinking. I said, you know, I'd need something to test a bit. Uh, I don't have a rack or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I had like, God, I, what, what did I have at that point? Uh, I, I took one module from them for just for demonstration purposes. And I, you know, I don't have any, like, everything was just stupidly expensive at that point. So I'm like, I'm, I'm not buying a fucking rack from Berlin and taking it back home, right? Because yeah. it's just like, um, I like you know I've, I've spent I've spent money I I actually don't really have to come to Berlin to do the strip right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm definitely not buying anything, and um, so then I actually ended up building that 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 that, that um, um, the, the the jumper cable module. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's kind of how it began. Uh, I showed awesome. up next year. I said, like, Super Booth is next year. Um, come and take a look. And it changed. I mean, that, that trip to Berlin changed everything for Animal Factory. Like, if I hadn't, if I hadn't, like, if Doug hadn't pitched it so hard. Yeah. And if I hadn't gone there, we would probably not be, we would not be having this conversation. I don't think, uh, I don't see how it would have happened. Wow. Um that's, yeah. that's 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 crazy wow yeah so that, that, that's built, how it is like where, where you have these chance encounters and and just truly say okay well this is what happened this is what we were able to do wow yeah i think um so there's i, I think there's two components to it and like this is a, a friend of mine told me you got to think about so opportunity doesn't knock you have to build the door, yeah, and then um, then you will be prepared for luck, because uh, you, you you cannot discount the role of luck. But if you're not prepared for it, it's not it is of no actual um, utility to you. I mean, it won't really help you do anything. So you need to, you need to be open to opportunities. To yeah, yeah, you got to be prepared in some sense and I think um, uh, at the very least I had the pedals and then I built the Baron Sandy and the Pit Viper as prototypes for Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. They were really messy. I mean, it was just like a mess of cables and stuff and I can't believe that uh, they actually made it in production in almost the same form, like a little nicer but uh, mm-hmm. um, compared to the stuff that we are putting out very soon. <laughs> I'm just mm. like wow, <laughs> this is this is where it started, huh? Yeah, like I've <laughs> I have like seen some of the older uh, modules, and I was like, dude, what? Like, how did you ever like even like produce these? Because you have two different PCBs that need to be connected by a jumper cable. I'm like, this is just a nightmare to even assemble. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, I don't know, it it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a bit of a of the conscience for Adichie then. Uh yeah, I mean, I guess in some way. Or am I, I am I am I touching a sensitive topic here? <laughs> I, I don't know. No. no, no, no. I no, I don't think. So. I mean, uh, I think so. I do bring some sense of like, um, because I have like extensively used mod. I have extensively used modular, uh, like and come to own them a few times, but then it never really worked out. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. I was like, and I was really good at Max, and I had like a mono, like a grid and stuff, you know. I was like, I'll just make all my modular in the system in the box. Yeah. So that's how that's how I went. But then, because I used to perform a lot with uh, more with more modular, so I think so I can like get that sense of like, oh, you know, maybe this knob shouldn't be next to this one. Uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't like feel right. Uh, maybe these switches don't need to be this close together. So mm-hmm. that 
that expertise does like come more of in. a bit of a, and, um, uh, a usability a user experience user interface yeah, kind of approach yeah yeah i mean uh, other they also does uh, like like we all think about it i think so that's like uh, that's one thing about the comma about the companies that we're very customer focused so each time when we're making a decision we always think that okay what will the car customer like this like anything from choosing which knobs that we're going to put in to mm -hmm. how the face plate is marked uh, like you know the devil's in the details and we really try and take those details seriously mm -hmm. whenever we are working yeah. yeah I'm kind of really happy you said that because that's um um i think uh so he doesn't work with us anymore um mm -hmm. except when he's in town i guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whenever he, he feels like it <laughs> yeah when he feels like it he's uh so before aaron there was um i think uh employee number one was david mm -hmm. and um david actually so David joined Animal Factory out of complete curiosity. He was just like, uh, I want to know about the Boca Scent. I want to know about it, which is a DIY synth project that I published for free. Uh, you can just grab it off the website. Yeah. It's not very exciting. It's just like a, it's a, it's it's a, it's an, it's a modified Atari pink punk console circuit that I, uh, that we did for this event that happens here. But anyway, so David joined and he had no technical knowledge whatsoever. He is, uh, he's, start, he's starting music production here, and, uh, but what kind of like stuck, uh, what kind of stood out was that he was a classically trained violin player. Oh, nice. And I said, okay, you know, that is something that requires a lot of self-discipline mm -hmm. and a lot of repetition. And that's kind of what, I mean, those are, the things that I think I would really look for. And he really internalized that message. I'm just like, you know, the one, like the, 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 the question to begin and end it all with is, you know, when in doubt, just always ask, or even if you're not in doubt, mm -hmm. if you're just looking for a direction there, how will the customer feel about this? Yeah. And that's trickled down um, really well to the point that if I'm looking for a shortcut, uh, I am not spared from that either. Now, because you've internalized uh, that yourself as well. Yeah, but if I'm if I'm thinking about doing something that goes against that, then there's going to be Aaron or Chinmay who also works with us. He's not part of the chat. He's a bit behind the scenes, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and David, he's like, you know, how's the customer going to feel about that? I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, you got me. <laughs> and uh, and then we do it the right way. Um, awesome. So it's 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 really coming down to that because you know I really feel like it's what we're doing isn't rocket science. There's like so many other people that are doing it, and I think that if you want to do it as a brand and just like then you kind of owe it to uh, your customers and also the people who work you you work with to. Um, to just keep improving on that front, I guess. Yeah, where you just say, okay, well, um, this is this is something that we focus on. This is what was one of the things that we really want to do, and this is what we focus on, and then develop on further. And if I w were to then take that into, uh, I've got I've got two approaches that I want to follow currently. On the one hand, I'm of course no. Um, I'm no expert on on Indian business uh, approaches, um, but I have one thing that I want to ask, and I, I hope it's not a too personal question to ask. Is uh, my dad? He he traveled to India um, quite often, and unfortunately, he passed away five years ago. Um, and unfortunately, I've never That's been nice. able to join him for one of his Indian trips. Uh, but one of the things he did, he left a uh, statue of Ganesha to both me and my, my other brother. And mm -hmm. then to take your approach, as you just described, well, you want to be receptive 
to good luck. You want to be receptive to the opportunity. How would that fit into the more classical Indian um, cultural and maybe even religious approach? Um, unbeknownst up to what kind of uh, religion you guys adhere to, but in the Indian culture, how would you classify that? Mm. 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 That's a really, that's a very astute question. Yeah, I'm gonna have to chew on that one. That's that's a good. Yeah, question. no worries, no worries. Um, it's a very personal question for me, so don't worry if you don't have an answer straight away. But yeah, yeah. I mean, we like Aditya, as far as I've known him, like we both aren't very religious people. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I think so. Like growing up in India, you are like, like it's you can't escape the car, the car, the car culture. And yeah. I, I think so, at least for us in Bombay, uh, like the work culture is so strong. So I think so we do have a really, really deep uh, work at a work at a work at work at sorry, work ethic. Like we have very strong. Yeah. Like it's hustle culture in, in Bombay. Yeah. Like you've got to do it or you won't like make it per se. Like not mm. that you won't make it, but you know, like that's the that's the whole. No, vibe. but indeed, yeah. as you say, if you're uh, receptive to it, uh, and if you are in tuned to well to opportunity, then you might be able to re receive that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even I'm mm. not sure how to go about answering. I, I think that. it's a little different, I guess, maybe in India. Um, so here's it's also very different where you are in India. So Bombay is very very fast as a city I mean the, the pace of life is really fast because uh, you basically you mm -hmm. work to live yeah um, or you live to work I'm not sure uh, <laughs> uh, no you work to live I guess yeah and then you die oh so that's, uh, that's life is hard and then you die it. that's another key yeah. thing that my dad <laughs> taught me yeah absolutely <laughs> So uh, yeah, mommy is mommy is a bit of a hustle, um, and we are very anti-hustle because um, we don't we don't want to speed up the process to the point that it starts like wearing down on um, what we want to deliver. I guess so. We've yeah. Well, yeah. we've pushed off. I mean, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to draw a line in the sand to that as well to say you know when we commit to a shipping date, then we we must ship. Um, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Corona things not included. Um, are people receptive to luck? I think here it's more about make your own luck in some sense. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to Delhi, it's even more aggressive because then it's um, it's well, it's not the same urgency, but oh, yeah. it's kind of it's a little different in magnitude where you want to be the top dog, basically. Um, I mean, it's 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 it's. I look. I I see it like this. And if if this makes sense, I think people here. Um, I I think people in India are just hungrier in some sense, you know, because you want to be doing things. Um, I mean, and uh, there's always different motivators, I and mean, mostly it's economical. Mm -hmm. uh, you you need the money, otherwise uh, there's nothing that's gonna. There's nobody who's gonna help you. I mean, like we have to live with, uh, we live, and in Bombay, and you see degrees of poverty that you will never see. Yeah. In Western Europe, or even East, uh, I don't think you'll see it in a lot of Eastern Europe as well. Yeah. Um, you won't see it in like in a lot of the developed or semi-developed world. The spectrum is uh, broader in that regard, you might say. Oh yeah, no, it's it's. Like it's um, it actually scares me sometimes because um, when you think of eighty percent of a population this big growing up, like having to like grow through po like extreme poverty or beg uh, for money, yeah, and there's no real empathy because like uh, at some point you just realize the problem so big you can't do anything about it that um, you, you're wondering you know what happens to a population that just keeps like that that's 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 that big that grows up without receiving you know 
care, empathy, basic needs, or the um, chance to better, or to, or the chance to create a better future for themselves, even. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't, there's, there's no healthcare. There's no like right yeah. to education. There's no roof above your head. There's no security in any sense of the word. Like yeah. you could be sleeping on a pavement, and then somebody will throw you out or beat you because it's their pavement. Wow. Um. So you're fighting about things that, uh, I mean, and when you when you grow up in a society like that, mm -hmm. um, I, I I think you just are a little more appreciative, I guess, of what you're doing, and um, I mean, I feel like sometimes like people ask me like, God, it's just like you're you're working yourself to the bone sometimes, like do you. Uh, do you not get upset about like um, the extent of work and how difficult it is? I'm like, you know, are you crazy? I live in India and I'm able to do something that I love. Yeah. Do you know how difficult that is? <laughs> you know, I can, I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Like it's it's uh, yeah exactly. Well, it's not just in India. People are stuck in dead end jobs that they don't like and. Uh, and uh, don't really get out to follow their passions or anything. So I, I just consider myself uh, stupidly lucky to do what I am doing right now. Okay. And um, and yeah, I about being receptive. Um, in, in a sense, we are. I, I think there is the sense of you know just always know where you are. I guess. Yeah. Um, and and what and what you're doing in India, you don't take that very lightly, mm -hmm. and that's why you'll see a lot of people like not, um, not leaving work or yeah. or having a stronger sense of commitment to what they do because they don't. We don't take a lot for granted. That's that's what we, that's yeah. the best way I could put it. Yeah. Yeah. You actually work for your luck. I, w I would say you you. You do, you don't just depend on luck, but you actually make sure that luck is on your side by, um, on the one hand, unlimited devotion to either a, well, a, a calling, as in your case, or maybe a unlimited devotion to a work ethic that you might see in others uh, as well and and, and then then intertwine those as well yeah i mean it's um it's called uh, in, in 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 um i come from a hindu family though i don't i mean i'm definitely uh, mm -hmm. uh identify as an atheist um um i think uh in in india the i mean the whole idea or in, in in Hindu belief systems, the whole idea of karma, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which means that you have to do what your duty is. Yeah. And um, it's really strong. And if I look at my dad, who is like still like working at 73 or 74, mm -hmm. um, he says, no, I got to do what my, I have to fulfill my duties. Isn't that dharma? Uh, karma is the work. Oh, and karma is the karma. Belief. Oh, the <laughs> karma is the belief. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, you respect the. You have to keep the belief intact, and in order to carry out the belief, you do the work. Uh, okay. So I'd say so those two like, are connected that, uh, at the core. You might say. Yeah, in some sense, like karma is the execution of the dharma. In some, in some sense, you know, um, and. Uh, and I guess there is like still a strong belief that if you do the work, um, there is this expectation that if you do the work, you will be rewarded for it. Um, but that is absolutely not what is written in Hindu scriptures because the idea is to do the word work without expect of reward uh, for those who believe in these things. So then it's more like a... Um... How do you call that? A from oneself to have that motivation to do that work instead of uh, doing that because you expect some sort of well uh, reward in this life or the other. 
Exactly. So it's intrinsic. Finding... The intrinsic. That was yeah. the word I was looking for. Sorry. Yeah, it's finding the intrinsic value in the work itself, and yeah. and um, really like fulfilling that to its core. Unfortunately, I don't I don't know what happens in India, but uh, India is not a very uh, quality conscious country. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure where it like <laughs> it's not it's not scaling somewhere down the line. Yeah. Um, that belief system. I, there's a, there are a few companies doing excellent work, but it's not something that's. Um, it, um, I don't know if it's a it's a mindset thing or, or a, a cultural issue or a political issue. It's probably like all of the, all all three. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so in theory, this is what you have. Like it's, uh, uh, don't take your work for granted. Don't take your life for granted. Um, and um, yeah. Don't take your luck for granted, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stay on your toes, you might say. Make sure that you yeah, are able to, uh, to switch around and do other duties when and if those are required. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry for this. Um, <laughs> for this. Oh, that's uh, cool. you, 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 <laughs> that this this is just, just a personal question for me. But then again, let, let's let's switch back to AFA and and, and have a quick look at uh, where you where you are going. What's what's next for AFA? Anything specific you're working on? Anything special you're working on? Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, Aaron, you want to go first? Since... Uh, yeah. I mean, so we're currently in production. We our office is full with boxes filled with PCBs. Uh, we have the Baron, the new Baron's coming out. We have a new Pit Viper that's coming out. Uh, the new Gordy Baron. Hit the sh- oh, that's the yeah. Baron Samadhi. Yeah, the Baron Sam. Yeah, the Baron Sam. Um, we have the new Pit Viper that's that's like coming out. Uh, the God Eaters are gonna hit the shelves. Uh, what am I missing? Um, Bone saw. Oh shit! Bone saw. Yeah. <laughs> Bone saw is Bone saw is coming out. It's our uh, state variable filter with FM. Um, so it all should be shipping out pretty soon. As soon as we get all things, all things in place. Um, awesome. So yeah, about a week or ten days. Um, yeah, to, it should all be uh, to ship to the EU. I think if we can finish assembling and <laughs> backing everything. Yeah, time. I I think so. God Eater is like mostly done. We are mostly done with the uh, our German or uh, sorry our dealership um, thing for for God Eater because I checked in today and yeah, most of them were packed also. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, awesome. But yeah, but we have the new Baron coming out, which is really exciting. Um, I am it, especially excited about the Baron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know what what the Baron does, we also have no idea what the Baron does. Uh, <laughs> we 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 put up on the on like I have had this talk with like over the over the, over the a few times. Like, what does it do? He's like, I have I have no idea. It just makes things sound nasty, and clearly you, you, you like run anything through it. You mm-hmm. run drums and they just sound massive. You run like guitar oh, or like wow. some synth lines through it. It just sounds insane. I, I think so. It's I think so. It's a fuzz with like an yeah, it, it, it's a fuzz with um with this like weird octave down circuit and a gate and stuff. It's kind of like um the band something was was my take on the Jordan Boston, but um, and also on. I said I want to build like a really wild oscillating fuzz, which isn't impossible to get back to the same settings like the fuzz factory. Because I like, I like the fuzz factory is wacky, but I just can never find the sound again. Like, nice. If you um, so yeah, so the Baron is a bit different because it doesn't do all this. It does less of the screechy stuff and more of the octave down, gated, chewy, synthy. Um, stuff, but I have no idea what to describe the stuff as. Uh, mm-hmm. the, I, 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 I think um, you you have to play with the knobs and just find what you think sounds good yeah. to you because I'm not going to explain it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and, but uh, just a quick question about the name then, yeah. because when you the first time I heard Baron Samadhi, and um, the first time I saw the the pedal itself. 
and Baron Samedi uh, would immediately evoke these visions of um, um, extreme voodoo, over the top, those kind of things. So, am yeah. I right in, in assuming that that was one of the the, the inspirations for this? I think so because I think it was. Um, I actually had the original battle, the the very first Bowen Samedi in uh, the office, and it, it's. Um, and this was back when I was still etching, like acid as etching pedals, mm -hmm. and I found this really impressive, um, uh, this really impressive piece of art by somebody that I thought would look crazy on a on an enclosure. Yeah, and it really, and it was, it was one of those things where I said, "Look, you know, let's do the edge first, and then we'll decide what to build in it." Oh, nice, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and um, and uh, so, the, uh, with uh, this one as well as with uh, Chemical Burn, the name came first. Nice. So I said, like, you know, this is a. Uh, this is what it sounds. This is what the name is. This is what it should sound like, and uh, kind of went off from there. Um, yeah, but the module is kind of uh, the new module is improved over the last one because the construction is drastically improved. Uh, oh, there's, nice. no, there's no, there's no, wires. There's yeah. no like two boards to connect with each other, etc. We mm -hmm. got rid of all the unnecessary trim ports, and now it's just. Um, it's a single it's one single yeah single board design no components on the back um nice and clean but it still and, has uh, the uh, life death burial and chaos settings i'm assuming yeah i think yes. so it's the it's the only pedal that has like uh, the weird norm like uh, weird, weird norm yeah weird weird, weird 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 naming conventions because even, even if we wanted to we can't really put a name to what those knobs do like awesome. yeah life does life does life rum does rum voodoo does voodoo like it it literally does voodoo like we we, we don't know what it does it does voodoo <laughs> to your, i, to I your gave account. it like technical descriptions but i was just like this is this is boring <laughs> <laughs> no because oh, we're yeah. all talking about what the actual character of a of a well especially in for an effect module we don't want to know what it does on the technical level. We want to know what kind of character it adds. And then descriptions like life, death, burial, and chaos mean more to us than, okay, well, this is going to do a an overdrive of X percent, if you ask right, me. Right, yeah, right. Right, exactly. No, that's that's uh, that's how I feel about distortion as well. I mean, it's just like... It's, it's pointless me telling you, okay, you know, this is a Zener diode and it has a, a mm -hmm. soft clipping, uh, which is asymmetrical because of the germanium in it, uh, etc. Like that, nobody cares. <laughs> Just like, no. give me give me a sound, man. So, yeah, give me a sound. It's... That's what I did for the, um, for the, for the voices, um, what was it called again? The, uh, the, the Led Redux. Rover. The Led Rover was, uh, the Redux was uh, one thing. And I truly fell in love with that, but especially the the Led Rover when you had these three very distinct distortion capabilities. Mwah, I loved it. I still mm. love it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've, so I've got a soft so spot have... for distortion. <laughs> uh, so, so I mean, but you also um, so, uh, what, another thing about Baron is uh, we're kind of like finding. At this point, we're finding ourselves driving a wedge between the pedals and the Eurorack um, yeah. equivalence because we uh, I've realized that you can't really do a one is to one implementation like keeping all the CV and everything going, which is why the Pit Viper is also super exciting because it's a very um, like at this point there is a very clear separation between the Pit Viper pedal and the mm -hmm. Pit Viper module. So the new Pit Viper module, um, what it has is, it has the Pit Viper distortion circuit with a couple of clipping options, but then it's also followed by, like it goes unattenuated into a state variable filter. Mm -hmm. And the state variable filter is set up so that you have access to the low pass, high pass, and band pass as knobs and not separate outputs. Yeah. So you can mix them in and out like an EQ, basically. Yeah, awesome. With filter, uh, with 
uh, cutoff queue and uh, FM control, I guess. I yeah. We're really excited about this week because I'm going to be putting the photos of the new modules out. Um, it's been two really hard years to try to manufacture this stuff on with with Corona and uh, more importantly the semiconductor shortage. shortage. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. We spent a good part of last year effectively designing the entire module range from the ground up. Like we had to kind of go to zero and then bring it up again because uh, we bought new uh, parts and we had to design everything around them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we had like put in a pretty big, because all our like TSOP parts, uh, like TSOP and SYC, uh, mm -hmm. op, uh, op, TSOP and SYC op amps, we couldn't find them. And they're like, okay, our lead times are like at least a year. Uh, and if you want to make anything, we have to like buy these QFN, these new packages right now. And I think so we oh, did wow. a good decision and we like spent a big chunk of money, but we got them in stock and we're like, okay, cool. We have them, but now we have to like uh, redesign all our boards to house them. Then once that was done, we're like, oh shit, okay, now we need to, pro now we need to prototype them. And I think it's the mm. biggest yeah. uh, how title we had was that um, because the people who we get our prototypes made from, since they didn't have it on stock, we had to put them on by hand, and they are like smaller than your Ooh. like nail. It's zero point two mm by like zero point three, yeah. I think so. So yeah, learning to do that by hand. Then we got a toaster to like bake our PCBs. So it's it's <laughs> oh, it's geez. like it's oh, wow. year. <laughs> it has been an interesting year. Just I like mean, the boys really pulled their weight. I mean, like they really pulled their weight on this. It's um, mm -hmm. just um, like. It's free humbling to see like just how much um, they put into it as well. So yeah, I think going. so. Yeah, we like I think so. Altitude gave us a crash uh, a crash course in how to route P and how to like lay out uh, a PCB because there was so much work. We're like, okay, just one person can't sit and like do all the layouts. So I think so. He gives a crash course and Chinmay like really picked it up oh, and wow. he does like all our layouts now. Yeah. So it was a pretty um, learn. It was a pretty steep curve to like learn how to like make them and then also like to put them on because that's yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty hard task. Like, do, but, to, but like, then do if, we, if we if we t with all of that in, in mind, um, mm -hmm. would you then say that the the Vivi sect was a an in between module or do you see AFA producing more of these kind of utility modules going forward? Hmm. Another site was something I just came up with for internal use, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, at some point, um, I just found it so useful that yeah. I, I I just put together a prototype, and uh, the Alex Pope guys were like, "Okay, what's this?" And uh, I said, "Okay, this is actually, this is actually pretty cool." And um, it was one of those things that was just happening to be in my rack and. Um, at one of the super booths, and uh, they liked it. Um, I think we worked on it a bit more so that we have, I uh, that we have these backlit knobs. It's there's again, it's just yeah. a really really simple module, and I'm very like impressed about just how much mileage you got out of it. Absolutely, yeah, what we're also yeah. doing. It's pretty interesting. Uh, what we're also doing with the Vimsec now is that um, it has an expansion header at the back. Um, which does uh, the normalizing, right? So you can yeah. link one, channel one to uh, two, three, or four, or all of them, yeah, um, and make it a mult. So what we're doing is we, we're developing a few modules of bone source. The first one that will use the vivisect um, as a slave of sorts. So the bone saw is basically um, a slightly more expanded uh, version of the filter from the pit wiper. It's a state variable with three outputs, low pass, band pass, high pass. But if you take the cable that we ship the bone saw with and plug it into your vivisect, then mm -hmm. it effectively makes the vivisect act as a three-band EQ of sorts. Oh, so wow. we're building 
we're building like things that keep these things like we're we're really um, I guess we're really stepping up on the expandability part of it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Funny, it's it's kind of weird because your rack is about patching, and this is about we're like, oh, you need less patch cables now. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, but you get more know, patchability oh, going forward. So that's that's all that that's ever that's everything everyone ever wanted. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. I think for specifically for what we do, because uh, for us it's you know distort the planet and just like. Um, make everything uh, louder and nastier and play like our distortions like instruments as well. Yeah. Um, what they're doing is, um, so all of the modules starting now um, will be part of one of two ecosystems. Uh, they'll either expand into, I mean, wherever it makes sense, obviously, we're not going to just slap this on as a feature if there's no actual benefit. Mm -hmm. But um, either they will coexist with uh, a vivisec module um so that's it's kind of a happy add-on that you have this utility module but you can also use it as an eq with something else or um uh, there is a larger system that we're working on which is basically an, an end stage stereo expansion system with the objective of taking four pairs of animal factory modules, so you could run like theoretically oh, wow. two goritos, two comas, two barons, and two pit vipers as stereo pairs, taking CV from just the central expansion module, and uh, it's all done internally within the rack, nice. as well as the Tannhäuser Gates uh, mixer, um, which is basically a four channel uh, mixer based around. It's a very unfaithful adaptation of the Buchla 100 series VCA. So the Buchla nice. 110. But um, we didn't stick to the original schematic all that much at the end because then uh, we said that we wanted a little more level and everything. Anyway, mm -hmm. so four channels mixed down to um, a stereo output. Um, so you have a, like a pan and a tilt EQ controls on each one. Yeah, and, uh, and each channel is a VCA as well. Yeah, so you can you can take the you can take the VCA output separately, or you can mm -hmm. sum it to the mixer output. But here's the fun part: um, if you feel the need for it, uh, you can buy another Tannhäuser Gates and sum that into your first one, and then you can do it with two more. Oh, wow. So you can get for yeah. people who are who really need it? <laughs> There's uh, 16 channels of your rack mixing. Um, Jeez, wow! Available, and uh, but it's also like it's not. We're not summing and sending. It's uh, um, um, you're summing all 16 channels um, uh, on one final mixer output. Yeah, on a stereo, With, stereo yeah. mixer output. With stereo so, and all of the effects that you already have integrated into that single platform, and here I am. No, no, just, the, the, yeah. the, 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 there's no effects in there, but there is a, a, a send, send return. There is a send and return. Yeah, and, indeed. Yeah. Uh, there's provisions for. Um, yeah, you can also send the return signal back to. Uh, I mean, it's already like built in there. You send four channels and the return signal to one final module. So. Uh, and use ah. all the inputs and outputs separately as well. Yeah, so so you can set up groups, uh, whatever it is that you need to when you have that many modules. <laughs> awesome. So in my humble opinion, so I was uh, lucky enough that Alex4 lent me a vivisect. If I were mm -hmm. to buy a vivisect today, because I'm still considering doing that, would that be forward compatible with all of these things that you're now describing? Um, the Vivisec doesn't integrate into the Tannhäuser because there's no actual, like, there's not, I mean, there's no actual use case that we could come up with. Okay. But the Vivisec that even the one you tried out is, it would have, uh, it would like work with the bone saw, for example. Yeah, and uh, but and there's at least like two other modules that we've already like talked about. Um, 
like they're in the, in the books. documented actually yeah. um, as a concept that would use the vivisect to um, split out um, certain outputs I guess yeah. like the uh, the EQ uh, um, the, the EQ capability that you talked about like that would probably yeah, on, be on your, your uh, V1 step of the, the the integrated modular approach yeah Yes. I mean, no, it's uh, exactly, yeah. yeah so, so we will be keeping that expandability in mind because I, I, I just think I like giving that, like, uh, if you own a vivisect and you like Animal Factory, then I feel like we should also do our bit to make that thing a little more exciting for you. Absolutely. <laughs> and you've got one fan here, absolutely. Don't you worry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm still... I'm still cursing uh, Alex Four for uh, for taking the vivisect away from me, but I'll, I'll I'll just make sure to get a new one. No, but absolutely perfect on. So I do have to be absolutely conscious of the time here. So uh, we've been talking for uh, ninety six minutes, and I do wow. truly appreciate. That's nice. <laughs> and if I do my math correctly, it's like now four a.m for you guys oh wow is it that's right yeah oh, damn, it is, yeah. so again i do have to apologize um but oh, i do uh, want to uh, this is nah, but I, would, I do want i do want to really... pose my, my my final two questions to you to both of you and after that see if um if we have any questions from the uh, from the audience so my penultimate question is always if you were to go back to aditya or aaron 15 years, 20 years, uh, back in time, what would be the number one piece of advice you would give them? And then maybe, Aaron, if you could go first, what would be your piece of advice that you would give oh, yourself shit. back then? Okay, so 15 years ago, I was I was, I was pretty young. I was like 10. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I'll, 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 <laughs> no, but even if you, if you go, if you go back to when you first started to say, well, okay, I want to work in music. What would be your one piece of advice uh, you would give yourself? What would be my one piece of advice? Um, don't say yes to everything that you can do. Say yes to things that are in your um, mental space that you that you should do. Because I used to uh, really, really like work myself to the bone, which is a good thing, not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. but um yeah i think so i tell myself that hey just pick and pick and pick and choose your battles it though it has like worked out in me amassing a lot of skills mm -hmm. that i would not have gotten but at the same time you know it like really really like drives you to the edge at times and yeah, yeah just like uh pick your battles pick your battles that. I, I love that thanks so much yeah and then for you, Aditya, what would be your uh, well, number that's... one piece of advice to give to a young Aditya who would be just on his journey to uh, get into music, get into audio, get into whatever you want to call it? Oh, my God. <laughs> the, um, yeah. Uh, well, that's such a measured and mature answer from Aaron. I was going to be like, I was like, you know, don't eat the yellow snow or something. Which is uh, which is always a good piece of advice. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's a good piece um, of advice. I, I think, honestly, like, I'd have to, there's a few of them, but I think the one thing that I would kind of emphasize, and I, I tell people now, and I've heard it from others as well, telling themselves, and it's like, be financially literate mm -hmm. because you owe that to yourself um, mm -hmm. and especially when you're coming from India or a place like India yeah, um, having the good sense to be um, to, to, to handle money better and to put aside a certain amount to invest it or whatever it is just like take to take the time to make sure that you are okay yeah. 10, 15, 20 years down the line will unlock incredible amounts of freedom and the decision making that you can have for future you. 
especially if you're going to be working in something that's as competitive and badly paying as music or a lot of creative ventures, in fact. Yeah. Um, uh, it's yeah. just like, uh, just always keeping in mind that the world is a really cold, hard place. <laughs> Uh, I think it's, so, it's like, a beautiful place, but it, you have to kind of like just be very um, aware of um, uh, financial realities. That's yeah. It. yeah, I I think so. Like twenty percent of what we do in the office is like actually like you know building stuff and like coming up with new new things. Eighty percent of our time is just like looking at the stock market and being like, why do our port portfolios, why, why are they not going up? I think so that's all we discuss most of the time. <laughs> at least, at least, at least, at least at like 9.30 or 10 when the markets start and we're like, oh shit, we're like, we're like losing money today. So I think yeah, so. And I, I wish I hadn't like started that, like started putting money aside two years ago. <laughs> but just like, just before I got married, I said, oh my God, I don't have any savings. <laughs> <laughs> And then you got married, and then you know I'll never have any sort of savings anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, my yeah. uh, my wife typically makes more money than I do, so yeah, I'm 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 not worried about that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, no, I I think that would, that would be my uh, my number one thing. It's just like have a sense of financial literacy. It doesn't mean that you're gonna. It doesn't mean that you're gonna make. A shit ton like you don't have to be a multi-millionaire or anything no. that's a beautiful book that somebody um gifted me in fact um and um it's called the psychology of money by morgan housel mm -hmm. and it's like really stripped down it's it just talks about if you you don't have to be like some sort of day trader or just sitting and looking at the stock market all day but make sure you invest something in something whatever that is yeah to take care of yourself uh with a certain it, it's, it's it's it talks about more than anything it just talks about a certain savings discipline mm -hmm. because um it's something that can hit you really hard later in life if you don't live in a country with a social system yeah yeah i'm just looking up some of the reviews on the psychology of money by morgan housel and I'm uh, gonna link that into the uh, description as well. That's a great oh, recommendation. Yeah, I actually said like you know if this, I wish this book had been around in my twenties. <laughs> I wish it some and uh, the knowledge was there. He's just like summarized it really well. That's it. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And then for my so, final yeah. question, and that is always the um, the special one is if you guys have any sort of questions for me because i've had the liberty of asking you guys anything that uh, that i wanted but i want to return the favor so um if you guys have any sort of questions for me like you said okay well this is what i want to know about jesper hmm. Hmm. yeah that's a good that's one a question right? uh, yeah um hmm what is like one module that you think that everyone should have and and don't say a vca because we all need vcas no i think that um on the one hand the vivisect really opened my eyes into what a multi-purpose mixer can do and mm -hmm. now that i don't have it in in my system i miss it and so that is one thing where I say, okay, you need to have one of these. Um, yeah, how would you describe Vivisect? On the one hand, I would say, well, it's a it's a multi multi purpose mixer, but it's more than that. It is a multi channel um, attenuator mixer and all those kind of things. And you then might be able to say, well, you, you can do all those kind of things with something like maths as well, but you mm -hmm. don't want to do those things with maths because, well, to be quite honest, it's not worth the HP just to use it like that. Whereas yeah. the Vivisect has a better, well, function to HP ratio, if you ask me. So 
I have gone as far uh, in my review of the vivisect where I said okay well I want to recommend this to everyone because it because of its usability and its applicability as well and I think that that is one of the kind of modules that you can't go without so that is mm. that would even though and I, I don't want to make this as a um, as an AFA uh, <laughs> sponsor, well, sponsor, 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 sponsor the video no but I, yeah. I, I, I truly it's feel I <laughs> no but I, I want to make sure that people understand Thank what you, kind I of ut utilities it, so you might need and I think that uh, the vivisect is a great example of one of those utility oh, modules sure. Especially for, for the sure. price that you uh, did you charge for it, yeah. Yeah, I I told us to other than any first show. I mean, the other thing I'm like, this is my favorite AFA module. I I really don't care about the rest. I'm like, I just I just <laughs> love this. <laughs> well, really I've really heard I've heard some uh, sound uh, demos from uh, from some of the more uh, effects based. Like I've heard, I've listened to some Baron Samedi audio uh demos and i've listened to some of the goat eater modules as well and i'm still quite impressed so i'm not quite sure to say it's my favorite one <laughs> but this is one of the modules where i say this is something that everyone who is interested in modular everyone that is yeah. interested in um having that hands-on approach that they need to look into yeah yeah yeah. yeah, I mean, thank, thanks. I mean, that was the that was the idea. I like have it simple, compact, and do a few things well. That's um, that's that's what I set out to do with the website, and it yeah. just worked out. Yeah, very um, well. I and then, then it's up to you. Uh, yeah, of course. Then, uh, DJ, then your question is. So this is a hard question, and this is a uh, and it, it's probably going to be a hard answer, and it's uh, maybe a not not the most um yeah the, you, you, what is what are the trends that um you observe in the modular and i guess maybe broader um electronic music production space mm -hmm. that <clears throat> you i mean, what what are the trends you most um disagree with other people about that's a great question so um a couple of well disclaimers beforehand um so i <laughs> i have only started to be into electronic music production uh for well we're in february so i could still say 11 months so I bought my first synthesizer, well, maybe a year ago, and then I started oh, wow. my channel in in March of last year, and oh, damn. yeah, and I've been I've, I've I've been really active in the metal approach, and I've done a lot of things, but one thing happened is that I fell in love with synthesizers a year ago, and I went had first into synthesizers and I said okay well I want to document this journey and I want to talk to people who truly know and understand um, synthesizers sound design those kind of things and one of the things that I then learned is that this is on the one hand this is a great community don't get me wrong this is one of the most supportive friendly and well to be quite frank awesome communities there is and i'm as i said i'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to meet everyone in super booth in in may uh this year um but one of the things that i've seen during my tenure over the last 11 months is a focus on stereo modules and on the one hand i do absolutely understand why you might want to make sure that you have stereo modules for uh let's say things like um delay reverb uh but also things like filters and uh, and, and and dedicated stereo well spacing 
modules as well. Uh, but there is also a trend where almost every module nowadays has to be stereo. And to be quite frank, I'm, I'm not always understanding why that is. And that could be on the one hand, that could be because I am, well, I'm incompetent because I, I haven't experienced uh, music production over the course of the last 15 years or so. Uh, but sometimes I just think like, okay, well, a single channel would be more than enough, right? So that might be one of my major gripes. Mm. And another thing might be, let me just think about that real quickly, it is about I'd like to see more things that go off the beaten paths where you don't want to see the same thing over and over again from multiple manufacturers. Uh, but I would love to see manufacturers go off those beaten paths and do something truly original. And as said, that is by no means meant as an insult or a or criticism, but it's more like a, nah, you might say an invitation. So what can we achieve if we let go of all kind of um, any sort of bias towards music or sound production? If we let go of all of our uh, predispositions on how we should approach those, what can we then achieve? If you look at the, the, probably like the last big revolution in sound design was probably uh, granular synthesis. And that's been around for a couple of decades already. But what is the next big thing where you might want to say, well, that's what we're gonna focus on from a sound production, music production or electronic music production point of view. And that's what I'm interested in. Nice. Yeah. Long uh, answer, answer for a very a great question, and thank you so much for that. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. That was that. That's a, that's actually a really good answer, and I I, I, I tend to agree with. Um, I mean, again, as a non practitioner, um, and somebody who's just building them, I feel like, uh, although we are exploring stereo now. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's places where it's more useful and places where it's less useful. That's mm -hmm. yeah. That's uh, just kind of like how you said it. We we decided to make an active move in that area because because uh, um, we are interested in seeing if people would like to use our things at the end of at the end of their chain. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like a mixer should have a stereo option. Yeah. Although the one thing that we consciously left out is stereo panning because it was just complicating the design too much. I'm oh, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, CV controlled panning because yeah. I just felt like out of on 16 channels of, of mixing, you're not gonna be. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna be. Uh, no, but you could probably do that earlier panning. on in your chain, if you ask me. And uh, yeah. don't get me wrong. Um, there's a there's a there's a time and place for stereo, and there's a time and space for panning as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but I personally don't think that that should be something that needs to be incorporated into every single module. But that's me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. I mean, I, I remember this uh, this one time I was on the road with uh, Bustle Instruments, and somebody I can't remember who it was. Mm -hmm. But I said like, uh, uh, so how many channels of the mixer do you want? He said, I just want one channel. <laughs> 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 and he he he, he pre proceeded to bang out this really crazy uh, drum and bass breaks modular techno set, and was just like, oh, like holy shit! And he was like, <laughs> yeah, hey, you don't you don't need stereo. <laughs> no, absolutely. Mm. And that is one thing, and. Even though I, I, I feel I still feel um, uneasy by giving any sort of criticism to the to the uh, to the industry being so extremely young and unexperienced in this whole thing, 
Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what the rest of uh, 2022 and the rest of the future is going to bring to Eurorack or synthesizers or sound design in general, actually. Yeah, same here. Um, well, hopefully, I think um, I, I'm just hoping that Superbooth is well visited because uh, as things stand, <laughs> barring any further surprises, um, I will be there. So Animal Factory will be very present with all of this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also curious to see what people have been getting up to given the constraints that the last couple of years have been imposed on um, well, on everybody and actually so absolutely yeah. So, yeah. I think that's a that's a good point there um, so I'm just gonna quickly have a look at the companion channel if we see any sort of questions um, we do see a couple of comments so we've got Benj uh, saying AFA panels rule easily top 10 graphics in your rack with a lot of emoji after that <laughs> oh, thank you Thank you. <laughs> and also a uh, a comment there sure. saying happy wife, happy life, and I can only agree with that. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think I, I don't want to. I don't ever want to disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, but yeah, the graphics, I have to give uh, all the credit to uh, the big fat minimalist. Um, who, um, his name is Anirudh Mehta, he is an incredible designer and illustrator, a visual artist actually, and uh, um, I think uh, it's been like a huge catalyst for Animal Factory because uh, it, was, it was actually he who, it was actually him who changed the, like how I thought about panel design as well, because mm -hmm. early on with AFA, like the aesthetics, I had this thing where I was just like, you know, I'm going to look for artists. And I want to make like this. I'm just going to catalog the artists that I like, and then every now and then, when I see when I have a pedal or a module, I'm yeah. just going to make a different artwork and a different style from a different artist. And he says, you know, that's uh, this is like I just moved into the same office as him. He said, mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool, but I'm going to stop you because you're looking to become in. We just started with Alex Four at that point, because you're breaking into international markets now, and you're becoming a brand. And I feel that you should also really start thinking like a brand. This is not just a hobby project, because the one thing that your products lack mm -hmm. is any kind of visual cohesion. So yeah. they're just like completely different um, things and. And then I it kind of I thought about it and uh, I looked at um, some of the best URAC brands out there or battle brands and I said okay shit you're absolutely right like noise engineering make noise instro now um, yeah there's something very distinctive about how they pursue uh, pursue their, their their visual identity yeah and I think uh, Ani really shaped that for us. Yeah. So what was the helps. name of the artist again? Because I, I, I uh, missed that. The the big fat minimalist. Uh, big. Let me just make sure that we have that big fat. Mini it's uh, the sorry the big fat minimalist. Oh, uh, absolutely! Don't you worry. The big fat minimalist. Uh, Studio yeah. big fat yeah. dot com. That's right. That's him. Yep. Yeah. It it does it it does help that we share an office together. So each time we. Like we need some, we need some something done. We just have to like, cl like walk a few steps, and then we can make. Hey, we have a new module coming out. We need, like, things done. And he is it done absolutely for a beautiful mm -hmm. things that he or or they have on the website. It's beautiful stuff that yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, no, he's um, he just um, his his work is really something else, and. Uh... In fact, uh, <clears throat> the new Baron module is the one that is the first one in a long time that isn't designed by him, mm -hmm. but by somebody who he works with. Oh, so nice. he also works out of our studio, and he kind of gave him the direction. Yeah. Um, so it's it's definitely set us on a path right now, and uh, I think it's safe to say that we're we're we're. we're I, I don't even I don't even tell him like. 
this is what I want it to look like. I'm just like, hey, this is this is what it sounds like. This is what it's called. Mm-hmm. And um, just do your thing. <laughs> awesome. And he and he just knows. <laughs> so. Yeah, he's got he's got a picture of the uh, Orobas on his yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. That that is a defining design, if you ask me. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was a huge module for us actually, and Orbus Two is uh, coming out. It's going to be a little different. Um, doesn't use the same tubes, so there's definite audio differences. Mm-hmm. Um, because the first one was just limited to the six SJ Seven, and, uh, and yeah. we're not going to we're not going to make a second run of that at any point. But, I can imagine. Uh, just want to keep that uh, limited. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even if I wanted to open it up for more, I think uh, the one major pain is finding those specific tubes and sourcing them down in India. Yeah. Um, others are easier to get, like current production EF86. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> we will be releasing Orbus to at some point this year, but it's going to be it'll be different and uh, it's mm-hmm. going to sound different. Um, so, yeah. Like a Troop 2.0. I guess... Um, no, yeah. you know, it'll be in some sense, yeah, but it's just... Um, I think with vacuum tubes, um, um, the thing is it's it's a very audible difference, even sometimes yeah. within the same tube type um, um, from different manufacturers. Um, and, uh, you've heard of tube rolling, which is swapping yeah. different manufacturers tubes and stuff so in this one it's a metal can tube versus a glass uh, with a regular glass tube and uh, uh, it's not bad it's just it doesn't have the same it's different uh, yeah yeah it's, yeah it's a little more I guess modern sounding I don't know <laughs> it's yeah it's a little bit more controlled and I mean how I look at it is like we have a production model that we can like make uh it's a little bit faster to like make and then we have the limited one which took a lot more uh uh man hours to like construct so mm-hmm. it definitely like was harder to make but yeah so that's how i see it but yeah it does sound different it does it, it sounds good in its own way like it does it still oh, it sounds great but it's, yeah it's, so it's more it's like still... a revolution than an evolution of the original one yeah yeah yeah. Awesome. awesome. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So um, let me just go back to the companion channel. So I do see um, Lul. Thanks, Adi, Iron, and Jesper. Love you all. Yes, you paid a great artist to represent your company. So I think that is in regards to uh, Big Fat Minimalist, um, which is a which I'm, I will probably reach out to uh, to them to uh, redesign my 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 logo as well because I do have the feeling that I need something redesigned. So that's awesome. Oh, sweet. No, I'll do that. And then I would just say, well, uh, keeping an eye on the times, um, you guys need to get up in a few hours already. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but let me let me let me just put it this way. This is not the last time the three of us had a had a talk like this. We need to make sure that we do this more often. Um, and then, thank you for having us again. Absolutely, my my absolute pleasure and my honor uh, to both of you, Aaron Aditya. Um, thanks so much for joining. And um, I, the one thing I would like to ask is if if you've got any closing comments or any pieces of advice to the people who are listening either to the uh, recording or listening live um no i think so yeah just be kind um yeah go ahead and disturb the world (laughs) yeah um i don't think i'm qualified to give advice i don't Mm -hmm. know (laughs) I, Yo, I mean, yeah, yeah and uh, like one great advice that I can give is that uh, you know, buy our stuff. <laughs> uh, like, That's a great. Um, 
Yeah, yeah shamelessly, shamelessly plug it. Absolutely. I'm say that. Yeah, go ahead. Go on our app side. Uh, it's going to be out pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> and I can only I second that. I can only I can only well um, amplify that. Uh, but what I do want to add to that is, um, I hope everyone enjoyed this uh, this presentation of the modular clubhouse. Um, my name is Jesper, um, and I've been honoured to be joined by Aditya and Aaron from Animal Factory Amplification. Um, we do have a weekly meeting with interviews and open q a every week on this discord channel and all of these interviews and q a's will be recorded and and published on youtube i'm still looking into ways to make sure that we can also publish these as um what's it called again podcasts Oh, well, yeah. Mm. 2010 is back to claim that name. But people have asked me for to do that, so I'm still looking into that. Uh, but for now, I would say, everyone, please, wherever you are across this globe, how far west, how far east, what kind of time it is, how, how late it is in your morning, night, afternoon, or evening, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I do hope to see you for our next episode. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Transfer. Thanks so much, guys. We'll talk again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.